Hello everyone, we are from group 2 and today we're going to discuss about is physical credit card or mobile credit card safer? How can I prevent hackers from accessing my payment apps and accounts if I lose my phone? May mobile payment companies share my transaction information? And last but not least, how does mobile payment detect abnormal transactions? First, let's talk about physical credit card versus mobile credit card which is safer. A virtual credit card is created digitally with a unique, one-time number different from your physical card. This safeguards against fraud during online purchases since merchants don't access your real card information. Virtual cards can be locked or deleted without affecting your main account, adding another layer of security. Virtual credit cards offer many advantages, but they have a few downsides. Here are some of the pros and cons of virtual cards. Here is the three pros of virtual cards. The first one is improved security. Using virtual cards while making online purchases. Protects your actual credit card details and offers an extra layer of security compared to physical credit cards. The second one is flexibility. You have the option to set custom spending limits. Choose specific vendors where the card can be used, and set expiry dates without affecting your real credit card. The third one is convenience. Virtual credit cards are generated instantaneously and can be used right away for online purchases and contactless payments. Then, there are three cons of virtual cards. The first one is we can't always use them in store. Not all stores offer contactless payments like Google Pay or Apple Pay. While virtual cards are ideal for online shopping, you may be limited when it comes to in-store retailers. The second Owen is refunds may be complicated. Each store has its own policies, and some may only offer refunds through the initial payment method. This could be an issue if you used a virtual credit card number that is now inactive. In this case, you might receive store credit, a check, or a gift card instead. The third one is not ideal for reservations. When you make a hotel reservation with a virtual card, it can be difficult to match your payment method during check-in. Hotels typically require a physical card upon arrival, so using a virtual card may require additional confirmation, like contacting your bank. The second is about how can I prevent hackers from accessing my payment apps and accounts if I lose my phone. Preventing hackers from accessing your payment apps and accounts if you lose your phone involves a combination of proactive measures and immediate actions after the loss. Here are some steps you can take. The first is proactive measures. We can use strong passwords and biometric authentication that ensure that your phone and all payment apps are protected with strong, unique passwords. Also, we need to enable biometric authentication fingerprint or facial recognition for added security. Next is two-factor authentication 2FA which is to enable 2FA on all your accounts. This adds an extra layer of security by requiring a second form of verification in addition to your password. Third is encrypt your data. We use device encryption to protect your data. Most modern smartphones have encryption options in the security settings. Then we have regular updates that is to keep your phone's operating system and apps updated to protect against vulnerabilities. Then, we need to install security software that can use reputable security software to protect against malware and unauthorized access. Last but not least is to back up your data so you can restore it if your phone is lost or compromised. The second one is immediate actions after losing your phone. We can use Find My Device services like Apple's Find My iPhone or Google's Find My Device to locate your phone. Lock it remotely, or erase its data if necessary. Then, we can contact your mobile carrier to inform your carrier about the loss so they can deactivate your SIM card to prevent misuse. We can also change your passwords for all your accounts, especially payment apps and email accounts linked to your phone. Then, we need to deactivate payment apps like log in to your payment app accounts from another device and log out or deactivate the app on the lost phone. Some services allow you to remove device access remotely. Then, we can notify your bank and credit card companies to inform your bank and credit card companies about the loss. To monitor for any suspicious activity and possibly freeze your accounts temporarily. Lastly, is to report to the police. File a report with the police, especially if you suspect the phone was stolen. This can help in case of any fraudulent activities. Then the third one is about may mobile payment companies share my transaction information. Whether mobile payment companies share any transaction. Information primarily depends on the company's privacy policy and the applicable local and or national data protection regulations. 
Here are some possible scenarios. The first one is data collection and usage. Most mobile payment companies do collect payment information, including details like the amount, recipient, and payment date. This information is used to provide and optimize their services, detect fraud, and implement security measures. The second one is sharing issues. Many companies explicitly state in their privacy policies that they do not sell collected information to advertisers or unauthorized third parties. The third one is regulatory requirements. There are instances where companies might be required to provide your data due to legal regulations or government requests. The fourth one is preventing data sharing. Consumer protection and data privacy are top priorities for mobile payment companies, and most strive to protect personal information as much as possible. Lastly, it is about how does mobile payment detect abnormal transactions. The mobile payment system provides a platform in which smartphone users can transfer money to each other. This is performed by using codes sent through SMS. There are various benefits of this service for users like the simplicity of transferring money. However, abnormal transactions may occur as they become very common nowadays. It is a challenging task to detect anomalous transactions due to a large number of transactions and a variety of money laundering tricks. Mobile payment systems has three general stages that are used to detect such transactions. The first is discovery model. The discovery model is the procedure of appearing in a record to discover unseen models. With no predetermined design or assumption regarding what the models might be. The second is predictive model that is using the discovered records to predict the future. The third is forensic model, which is used to process and then apply these patterns to extract inconsistent or abnormal data elements. Mobile payment systems employ various methods or techniques to detect abnormal transactions. First is machine learning algorithms. These algorithms analyze transaction data to identify patterns and flag anomalies. They can detect unusual spending patterns, such as a sudden spike in transaction amounts or frequency. Second is rule-based systems. These systems use predefined rules to identify suspicious activity. For example, a transaction might be flagged if it exceeds a certain amount, occurs in a different geographic location than usual, or happens at an unusual time. Third is behavioral analysis. By analyzing the user's typical behavior, such as their usual spending habits, preferred merchants, and regular transaction times, the system can identify deviations that might indicate fraud. Fourth is device fingerprinting. This involves collecting data about the device used for transactions e.g. device ID, IP address, geolocation. Transactions from unfamiliar devices can be flagged for further review. Fifth is velocity checks. These checks look for a high number of transactions in a short period, which could indicate fraudulent activity. Sixth is geolocation and IP address tracking. Transactions made from locations that are unusual for the user or from known fraudulent IP addresses can be flagged. Seventh is real-time monitoring. Transactions are monitored in real-time to quickly identify and respond to potential fraud. Last but not least is two-factor authentication 2FA. Adding an extra layer of security by requiring a second form of verification can help prevent unauthorized transactions. That is the end of this video. I hope you guys like it. Thanks for watching.